a video lab on the law of conservation of energy using a mass bouncing on a spring. Let's learn physics. In this video that you see, there's an interplay among gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy, kinetic energy, and ultimately it slows down and all that becomes thermal energy. These are the equations, mgh one half mv squared and one half kx squared, and we know that the net energy at the beginning is equal to the same value as the net energy at the end, or the total energy remains constant, and that's what we're gonna focus on here. Remembering those equations, well, we need the, the spring constant for that spring first before we do anything else. So using Hooke's law, F is equal to kx, let's do that. In order to find the spring constant, the k in that equation, we'll find the difference in displacement, the difference in lengths of the spring, and the difference in the force. So I'm showing, showing two of those. That is one force value and one length value of the spring. And here I stretched it more, and here is another force value, the new force value. Find the difference for the f in the equation and the new length value, find the difference for the x in the equation, and then find the spring constant k using Hooke's law, f is equal to kx. Using the fixed meter stick in the background, we want to find that middle position, the equilibrium position, the point where the spring is at rest and the up force from the spring on the mass is equal to the down force from Earth on the mass, and you can see the middle position there. We also need the top and the bottom while this thing is moving. So the top, middle, bottom, we have the middle point already, you have read that, record these values, and as this thing bounces up and down in slow motion, I've lined it up so you can see first the top position on that fixed meter stick in the background, see it? So take a look at that record that value, and then moving the meter stick down so you can clearly, without parallax, see the bottom position. There's the bottom position. So look at a few of these values, get a good average of the top and the bottom position, and then you're gonna to wanna to start filling out a chart. Like, draw a picture. Draw a picture with this thing on it and show all the values that you have. That is, by the way, a 200 gram mass when you're getting to mgh and one half mv squared, 200 grams. We also need the position where the spring is not stretched at all, so there's no elastic potential energy in it. And from this point is where we will measure the x for the one half kx squared. So you see where that spring unstretches itself, there's no more tension in the spring. Looking across the bottom of the mass, using the exact same position we've used before, you can see the unstretched position. So now, in a sketch that you can make, which shows a spring and everything else in it, you can show the, the top position, the middle position, the bottom position, and the unstretched position, labeling everything with the spring on it, much more complicated than what I've shown, to record your values. And now using gravitational potential energy as mgh, and kinetic energy is one half mv squared, and elastic potential energy is one half kx squared, you can fill out this chart, remembering that the total energy should be a constant value. Now there's one missing velocity value that you'll have to find using these energy principles. When you're done with that, you can then sketch a graph of all four energies on this single graph, curves and lines and whatever you think is there. You can use the top, middle, bottom positions and all the values from your energy chart. Complete lab report, standard format, everything generated by a computer except maybe that graph.